locked in to the hottest station on the planet. Resistance is futile. The revolution has begun. You're listening to Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo, here's your host, best-selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio, the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. It takes a very special type of person to go into business for themselves. And I don't know, maybe some people are more, are more naturally gifted in the area of risk taking than others, but there's probably a unique set of core strengths that we all have and tapping into those strengths and understanding if we do go into, into business, what's the best type of business? What's the best business model for us, depending upon our individual strengths? Some people are certified experts in figuring this out, and we are lucky enough to have one of those experts on our show today. Her name is Joe Self, and she is Peru's only Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. She's the lead facilitator and trainer for Strong Communities and Strengths Genius throughout Latin America, and she is on a mission to raise a strengths-based generation. She seeks to create a world where everyone can live to their full potential, talents aren't wasted, and happiness is contagious. What a great mission statement. Joe, self, welcome (laughs) to Rebelpreneur Radio. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you so much. Looking forward to our chat. Yes, it's it will be really great. And I should also mention that you are in a very, what I would consider to be a very exotic part of the world. Where are you joining us from? So I am actually in Lima, Peru, where I have been living for the last eight years. That is, it, that's really special. Where are you from originally? From the States? I was born in Michigan and raised in Kentucky. I am from the States originally, but at a very young age, I just knew that I was meant to live somewhere else and uh, had an opportunity to study in Peru while I was still in university, and it just kind of left its imprint with me. And when I left the U.S. in 2010, I originally went to Uruguay, but long story short, I met a Peruvian girl while I was there, and we were chatting about it, and I was sharing my memories, and she said, well, if you like it so much, why aren't you there? Mm. So that's a really good question. So I bought a one-way ticket, got a job in tourism in Cusco, and took my chances. And here I am, eight years later. Wow, that's really cool. Well, that's inspirational. I mean, if if you don't if you don't like where you're at, or if you have a vision for being someplace else, then just make it happen. Buy that one-way ticket and go for it. Right. Well, you never know until you do it, right? Yeah. I mean, everything we want to say is on the other side of fear, and so a lot of people say, "Oh my God, isn't that scary?" And I think. I don't know. It's scarier not to do it for me. (laughs) I I can't stand the idea of what if. Yeah. I just, I'd rather know that it works or it doesn't work and make the next choice. (laughs) Yeah. Better to try and fail than to not try at all and wonder, right? Yes. Yes. And that's one of those phrases. I have to say that you said to try, you know, it's better to try and fail. That phrase that's out there that my friend's mother used to say to try is to fail. And even, you know, Yoda from Star Wars has the similar (laughs) phrase. And I think there is no phrase that irritates me more than that one. (laughs) Because if you don't try, how do you know? I mean, trying means you expect a potential failure. And by failing, we learn. It fails fast, fails forward. Right? Like, I just, I don't get that phrase at all. (laughs) Definitely not written for me. Definitely not written for me. The the force (laughs) is not with you on that one, Joe. No, no, it really isn't. (laughs) (laughs) But the force is strong with you in the area of being a Gallup certified strengths coach. Uh, For listeners who are not familiar with that, I am familiar with it because it was part of my master's program. And it's a very, uh, it's a very good uh, thing to, to use as a tool to help us identify our strengths. But, but you're the expert. Tell us and explain to our listeners what the Gallup Certified Strengths Program is all about. So strengths is something that has been around for, oh gosh, the research on the strengths 
movement has really been around for well over 50 years, which started with Dr. Donald Clifton. And at the core of its message, it is focusing on what's right with people instead of what's wrong. Mm. And it really was the, um, he was the grandfather to positive psychology and he's the father of strength psychology. And so it really is a part of that positive psychology movement. And they developed over the years, 34 talent themes that every person innately has in them. Now, we don't have all 34 at the same level. We have some talents that are more dominant than others. And that's where we are naturally inclined to think, feel, act, and behave. And the idea is, is if you're focusing on those talents, your path to excellence is much greater than if you consistently focus on weaknesses and try to improve there. Yeah, that really makes a lot of sense because we could spend, and, and I guess this is what conventional wisdom says. Um, if you take a, a, uh, a round peg and try to stick it in a square hole and just keep trying and, and pushing and pushing and trying to turn your weakness into a strength instead of just saying, yeah, forget about your weakness. Let's just focus on your strengths and, and leverage them to the maximum potential. Exactly. Exactly. And there really is just a much better rate of return on that investment when you do it. And so talent is the raw place where we start. And that talent can actually look like a weakness if you're not using it the right way. Right. Like, so Hmm. it's not saying that there are no weaknesses, but it's really reframing how we think about weakness and where we put our energy so that we get the best return on what we're doing when we're studying, we're training, we're getting these skills. Um, We want to do that in areas where we're just naturally inclined because we'll get so much more out of it as will others around us. Mm, I like that. And and it's also true that we could be incredibly strong or gifted in a particular area, but the environment that we are trying to utilize that strength is all wrong. It's the wrong job or the wrong position or the wrong company or just maybe the wrong country. Who knows, right? My friend's son actually, you know, was actually working in an IT job. He, he was good at what he did and he, he liked what he did, but he was really unhappy and couldn't quite figure out why he was so unhappy. I mean, he was in IT, he was working the job that he was good at, he was getting good money. He should have been happy, but he wasn't. But what happened? He was alone. He was in a basement. He didn't have a lot of contact with other people. He was very isolated. And he takes the assessment, the Clifton Strengths assessment, you know, with his mother's urging and finds out he has four of his top five talents in the relationship building domain. Uh, and he's in, and so in the basement writing who, code. <laughs> right, and he's, he's in a basement writing code and he's not talking to people and he's not relating to you. Well, no wonder he's miserable. Hmm. And now he does a really similar job, but now he's training others at retail level and working in POS and being a part of a team and he even travels. So he's doing exactly what he was doing before, but now he's doing it with other people hmm. and he's so much happier. That's right? so incredible. So, yeah. So, so I think the lesson so is that, that there is no right or wrong. There's only strength and weakness. And it's all in how you, you apply that, how, how you, exactly. I guess you got to know what it is before you can really apply it. Uh, but the, the corporate, the current corporate, culture does not always recognize that in advance of the hiring um, process. And that's where you come in to try and um, show them how to how to identify that and help people fit into the right position from the beginning. Is that part of what you do? Right. That is part of what I do. And really, strengths can come in even very early on. There are ways for us to even work with our children hmm. in their strength zone. Language looks a little different and we use it a little differently. But we really can't start this earlier, which is where my, my passion for raising a strengths based generation is, you know, knowing that this is fully possible because for me, strengths is really a language, right? Mm-hmm. It is a way for us to have like a human glossary of why we are. And when we can look at each other and say, Oh, that guy has analytical. I bet he needs proof or numbers or wants a lot of data. So if I'm going to go talk to him, I might want to lead with that. And then he's more likely to listen to what I have to say. Hmm. Right. Or if I know someone has empathy, then I know they're going to really need to express their feelings and their emotions because that's just part of who they are and their basic needs. Hmm. Like every strength has an I do statement and I 
M statement, I contribute, I value, I need, I detest. And we can use those as a basic guideline to understand when we're getting triggered, when something's bothering us. Is it our need that isn't being met? Are we being viewed or not valued by another person? Is it a misunderstanding of our talent? Right? So we can really, for me, it's a language of compassion. And it's the best way for us to really connect with one another in a much more understanding way where we look at each other, even in conflict, with a positive eye instead of an immediate negative one or mm. judgment. Yeah, I like that. And, and so often we tend to to judge or to look at, at people um, in a negative sense if they don't live up to our expectations or if their strengths do not map to our strengths instead of valuing the differences and that we are all gifted and strengthened in, uh, in different areas of life. And I guess one illustration I use to help keep it straight is all the different positions that someone might play on a football team and the physique and the athleticism of each player in that position is very different. A quarterback is different from a linebacker and a defensive lineman <laughs> is different from a wide receiver. And, a, and then the kicker goes out there and, and he just looks kind of ordinary, kind of in some cases <laughs> kind of small. Right. Uh, but then he, right, right. then he goes out there, but he's the one that he's the only one that can really kick the, the ball straight and far, far enough down the field. So each one, if they're in their spot, in their place where they are strong, then the team does well. But, uh, I, I guess the corporate idea is like, we're going to hire someone who's really good at being a wide receiver, but we're going to put them in the linebacker position. And then of course they right. fail <laughs> because that's not just what, that's just not what they're made for. Right. Exactly. And what we forget is I love your analogy. And, and, and what we forget really the idea of strengths is that we're, we're all stars. We're sharp. We're pointed, right? We have value. And, a person should not be well-rounded. Mm. A team should be well-rounded. A person should not be. A that's person a, should be a specialist. That's a powerful distinction. Uh, it was, we try to be good at everything, and we end up being good at nothing. So it's not that exactly. we as individuals need to be well-rounded. The team needs to be well-rounded. How do we apply that to a, a business? You, you are a mompreneur. And, uh, which I love, by the way, I think that's awesome. Um, as awesome as rebelpreneur. I mean, that how, yep. I mean, I mean, that's, that's the rebelpreneur spirit is to be a mompreneur of all things. Um, so you, you've got a lot on your plate. Um, how do we take these strengths and apply them to our business so that we don't fall into the trap of trying to be everything to everybody? And then our business ends up being, um, so vanilla and so non, distinctive that no one can really make a, a real strong connection to who we are and what we do. Right. So I'll tell you right now that one of my top talents is maximizer. And I know not everybody knows the lingo. So just at a very quick glance, what a maximizer is, is a person who a believes in potential and strength. Maximizer believes in return on investment. We're never going to go from eh to okay. We're only going to go from great to even better. Right. I have a friend who has maximizer number one and says better is better. <laughs> because that's just what we think. Right. And 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 it's just this this true belief that we all have a place and we want to make it the best possible place that there is. And so for me, my other talent is communication. And I don't believe people need to find their voice. I, I don't like the phrase finding your voice. Mm. I think you need to claim your voice. Because it's in there. We've got it. We've either been silenced for some reason or we don't feel comfortable sharing it or we doubt it. Because honestly, when we do something really well, we tend to not think it's very special because if it's easy for us, it must be easy for everyone. Mm. Right. And so we downgrade what's really awesome about us and not not really even for a low self-esteem, just for a lack of awareness more than anything else. It's not a, I don't think it's a lack of confidence that most people have. I think it's a lack of awareness, a lack of self-awareness. Yeah. Because we, we I, tend to focus on the things that are, are negative or the things that we don't do well. And then the things that we are really expert in, we assume, well, everyone is pretty much an expert in, in that there's nothing special about that. And so then we, we undermine and undervalue 
who we are and what we have to bring to the table. And we spend all of our time trying to perfect an area of our life that we're never going to get perfect. Right. And if that was true, these, you know, super popular memes, like the life hacks of how old were you when you found out that this was meant for this or that you knocked the 57 on the high end ketchup bottle and that's the air pressure to get the ketchup out, right? Like somebody knows that, but then there's a lot of people who go, uh, I was today years old. I was today years old. I had no idea. And somebody else is thinking, how did you not know that? Right. And that's where our talents are as well as this whole idea of you've got something that you do really well. You've just not appreciated it hmm. for one reason or another. And so I like to help people really walk through their talents. And, and I believe where we've had difficulty with this psychology sticking, um, there's over 20 million people now who have taken this assessment. Um, and it's exponentially growing as we get more coaches out there, as we get more people sharing the message, um, and people are discovering this as an option. But I still think where we fundamentally fail in the sustainability of strength is we don't focus enough on the language of it and really teach it like another language. And I don't think we allow people to really fully claim who they are before we start trying to aim it at external goals. Mm. So yeah. I really focus on putting a bedrock foundation of strength underneath people so they have somewhere solid to launch themselves from. Because, you know, if you build in sand and just partial knowledge, it's not going to stick and it's going to feel hard. And I don't think we as coaches need to be translators. I think we need to be guides and helping people and soundboards, but I don't think we need to be translators. Hmm. And so that's where a lot of my passion comes in is helping people understand this for themselves so they can start seeing how to claim their voice. Hmm. I like that distinction. That That's very powerful. Um, it, explain to us, and, and I'm not trying to give you a trick question, but some people might be <laughs> listening and, and they say, well, you know, I've done the personality test and I know what my personality type is, or uh, even I've done the, the Myers-Briggs um, type test. Um, yeah. what is, yep. what, what is, what differentiates the, the strengths based thing that we're talking about compared to some of the other personality tests that are out there? So first of all, Clifton strengths is not a personality test. That's, that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Now, the second thing is if I'm going to give you, and I like this, I like some of those other assessments that are out there. And I think like most coaches were assessment junkies and we've tried most of it, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I like strengths. I like strengths as a supporting tool to other assessments and other programs that are out there. I don't think it's end all be all just strengths. So mm -hmm. I just want to say that, but I do think it's a super powerful tool that complements a lot of other things out there. And the difference with it is that we're measuring 34 talents. And as I said, everyone has those, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're looking at the Myers Briggs, you've got, you know, EI, you know, ESTJ, INFP, you've got 16, 16. Yep. 16 combinations, right? Mm -hmm. Just you've got a few more yeah. out there, right? But if I were to tell you that to find somebody else out there in the world, statistically speaking, that shares your same top five talents, that is one in 278,000 people. Mm. To find someone with those same top five talents in the same order, we're now talking one in 33 million wow. people. And no one is just five dominant talents. We are all 10 to 15 dominant talents. So now we're in the billions, hmm. statistically speaking. And we're not raised in the same countries. We don't have the same parents, right? Talents are seen. Just because you have the communication talent doesn't mean everyone's going to be a great speaker. You might be a great technical writer. You might be a great fantasy writer. You mm -hmm. might be a great storyteller, right? Communication can show up in a lot of different ways. And what's fascinating is if you and I were to share one of our talents and we were to read our strengths insight report, your descriptive paragraph would be entirely different than my descriptive paragraph. Interesting. Because that description of our talent is based on all 34 and where they fall on the test when you take it. Wow. I, I just had a huge group of 70 people from 20 different countries. One of their top five talents as a team was analytical. So you know these are people that do not <laughs> buy you know, just whatever anybody tells them, they need proof, they need stats, they need data, right? Yeah. The number of them that stood up and said, I don't know how I answered a quiz with 170 questions and it got so much right. 
I don't know how this is so accurate. I'm trying to figure out how they know me. <laughs> like it was really stunning and startling to them <laughs> that it could have such accuracy. And a lot of people say it's like reading a horoscope, like reading their astrology, reading their sign. And while Dalek would certainly hate that I use that analogy, it's the same kind of thing where you go, you don't read your report and go, well, I didn't know that about myself. Oh, well, that's interesting. No, you go, oh yeah, yep, yep, yep that's me. Uh huh. <laughs> nope, without a doubt. And, and you suddenly go, that's how I explain that to people are, oh, right? And if you share it with someone who's really close to you, I always tell people, share this report with your spouse, with a friend, with a coworker. They're going to read that report and two of the most common responses are going to be, yep, totally you. <laughs> or it's going to be, oh, that's why you do that. Yeah. Right? But both of them are this like click of understanding that suddenly goes, I'm not going to judge you for that anymore. Now I get that that's just who you are. And it also allows us to not take things so personally. Hmm. Well, you know, right? that, that, that makes a lot of sense. So if I could, if everyone could just understand me, they, they would stop, um, <laughs> they would stop giving me such a hard time. They would just respect my differences and, and I would respect them and we could all get along. It's, uh, we got to well, get this message into more people. Them, <laughs> right. And especially for using them in the right way, right? Like I said, yeah. there's, there's a raw side to talent. Like mm -hmm. my communication can go on the raw side because well, I like to talk. I talk too fast. A lot. I have to be very careful. I get passionate. I get fast. <laughs> um, and I also tend to interrupt because I see where the conversation is going and I get excited and I, I, I am listening, but I, I interrupt a lot. Mm. So I have learned I physically put my hand or my fingers over my lips to shut myself up so that I don't override a person and I make sure I give someone else their time and their ability to share. Right, because being strong in communication means also being good at listening, not just talking or story talking. And so it's learning how to manage those as well. Hmm. I, I like that. And it, you're you are exactly right about our greatest gift can actually be our greatest weakness if if we use those strengths in the wrong way. Um, yeah. And I, 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 my gift is in writing. Uh, so uh, I've written. I've written books and I've written articles, I've written copy and writing is just how I express myself. But I've had employers that have told me, don't ever write me another email. Come and come and talk to me. <laughs> come and talk to me because um, it, especially if they get on the wrong side of me, because I can yeah. I can blister you in writing and, <laughs> and, and not even mean to perhaps. Uh, but I come across right. very differently in person sometimes than the way I, I appear to come across in writing. So that's something that we have to be aware of so that we don't blow people away with our strength. And then, then it becomes a liability instead of an asset. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. And that's when we know when we're not in our strength zone is if our strength, our real talent is becoming a liability in some way, then we need to modify somewhere. Yeah. Right. And a lot of that comes from looking at other talents and understanding where to turn the volume up on one and turn the volume down on another one to create that balance because really no talent works alone. All talents work as a team with each other mm, and they only it. work in relationship. I like that. So right? uh, as we take that and we apply it to our business, I think it, right. um, I, I think it really helps us to be able to see we don't have to be everything to everybody, but we can, we can focus on our strengths, focus on what we are good at, focus on the problems and the results that we can deliver and not try to be the imitation of everybody else out there and what they're doing. Right. And, you know, and we as coaches, so the majority of the people that I work with are coaches and they're in fact, even other strength coaches are a majority of the people I tend to work with. But I also work with entrepreneurs, service-based entrepreneurs who really are their brand, right? And they mm -hmm. need to set themselves apart. And, you know, someone will come to me and I say, okay, great. What do you do? And they're like, I just really like helping people. <laughs> let's go. Good. Coaching mantra. Got it. What do you help people do? Like, let's get a little deeper. <laughs> who do you help? What do you do? And it, it does come through story and it comes through our story. And I always tell people like, you're about you is really about them. Mm. 
you need to tell your story in a way that someone says, Oh my God, she's been in my shoes. She gets it. I, I <laughs> yep. I've done right. Like yeah. she's going to understand me. And so when I work through talents, what we do is we do a really strong foundation and then we start building brands out from there. And as I said, it's about claiming your message and claiming that story. And what that means is you and I may have a very similar client and we're in a very similar field, right? But we're going to go about it a very different way because of our talent. And so that person is going to resonate with you or they might resonate more with me. And that's mm-hmm. perfectly okay. There's plenty to go around. People are like, oh, but there's so many coaches out there and I don't know what I do. And I go, okay. So if we all stop singing the first time someone thousands of years ago opened their <laughs> voice and sang a song, <laughs> right? Did we all stop singing? No, we got choirs, we created harmonies, we have the voice, we have the X Factor, we have American Idol, we have like how many, you know, ways to sing one simple song that's been done for a thousand covers. Yeah, yeah. Because we all put our own shape to it. So that's what it is to me is you can even take one song and still sing it a hundred different ways. That's right. Because yeah. it's what we choose to do with that. And so in our messaging, you know, and what I try to get people to do, I really... um I would talk about, you know, there is a formula to marketing, right? There's some basic things you've got to do. There's a certain order you've got to do it in. Um, but I try to make sure that the people don't have to work for the formula, that the formula works for them, hmm. right? So that there's certain elements. If someone is more of a strategic thinker versus an influencer, the way they're going to reach out to people is going to be different. The way they're going to make their connections is going to be different. You may not have to be online and in digital marketing, right? There might be another way for you to grow your audience depending on what it is you want to do. And so we look at really each person and what is going to be their strength zone and be the best use of their marketing message. And we make sure to craft their story in a way that their story helps them identify their ideal client. So I don't subscribe 100% to the, my ideal client is a 35 to 45 year old woman who has three kids at home, who watches these movies, who's read that book, who loves this person. Like, there's some piece of that that's good, but that's not where you start. I think you start with the message. Like my, uh, one of my friends and someone I've worked with as well came to me and she said, I just got done talking to two different coaches and they told me I have 10 avatars and I need to make a message for every single avatar. I was like, you don't have 10 avatars. You have two. <laughs> and she goes, wait, what? And I said, I've been working with you for a year. You don't have 10 avatars. You have two. <laughs> and, you know, and we sat and talked about it. And she is, she's, she's a dream weaver, right? And she helps people take those latent dreams that have been burning inside them forever. And I was like, it's like all these people that have this little pilot, tiny pilot light of this burning desire of something they've always wanted to do, whether it's as a job or a hobby or whatever it is. And you are the person that helps them light that pilot light and find that passion again and reignite that long burning desire that's just been sitting there doing nothing. Hmm. And she's like, oh. And I said, and who needs that message? Lots of people may need it, but who's probably going to hear it, especially coming from a 60-year-old woman, is going to be, soon to be empty nesters or empty nesters who are now thinking, hey, I've got some time on my hands. I could actually do this. Or someone who's soon to be retired or just retired, right, that thinks, I've got time now. How do I take this thing that's been in my head or my gut for years and years and do something with it now? Mm. And she's like, oh, right. I'm like, so when you... And I said, and that's what you've done in your life. You've had this burning desire to do this for how many years, and now you're finally doing it. You're right. To help other people do the same thing. Hmm. And how great is that? So if you just tell your story, the people who relate to your story are going to come and want to work with you. Yeah. And and the ones that don't, won't, and that's perfectly cool. You don't have to change who you are to try to attract everybody. In fact, if if you do it correctly, you're going to turn off People who just don't resonate with that, and it's okay. <laughs> I don't. I have. I have it. I have a little meme that I put up that says, "Don't listen to the naysayers. They aren't your people anyway." <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I it's think okay. we we should make that little sign and hang it up around somewhere. That's that's, yeah. that's pretty good. I love that. Um, I I can't believe how fast our time is is going. But <laughs> I I, I got to ask you before I, I let you go. What are you working on right now that's got you really excited that you'd like to share with our listeners? 
Well, right now, in addition to the branding work I'm doing, I'm actually in the process of uh, building strong communities, which means reaching out to more community members, politicians, leaders, business owners, people who are wanting to create and incite change and sharing the message of strength with them and how they can bring that into their organizations, into their communities, into their schools. And I'm doing that predominantly in Spanish-speaking communities and throughout Latin America. And that's pretty exciting. And then the other project I'm pretty excited about I'm starting to launch is also a Circle of Influence program, which is a smaller, slightly higher priced program, but not too high, of selected leaders who really have a vision for change, are wanting to innovate, and would like some support. Because sometimes being out there as a solopreneur, a mompreneur, you can do things, but you feel like you're in a vacuum. Mm. And so I want to create a community that has a little bit mastermind, a little bit marketing knowledge, a little bit of sharing and additional support because they say if you can get 10%, you can start to actually create a movement and get your idea to catch fire. So if we can have 10 people who can promote each other, support each other, help each other build and support community-based programs and give back, I just, I love that idea Mm. of of bringing those kind of high vision leaders together and, and doing something together that can really make truly sustainable, positive change. Yeah, what a what a powerful vision you've got there uh, to create a world where everyone can live to their full potential, their talents are not wasted, and their happiness is contagious. I love that. So, um, so this has been really inspirational and motivational. It, it I always say that it sounds like a cliche, but every time we have a guest on, we get a a little different piece of the puzzle that contributes to this wonderful collective synergistic wisdom and energy and um it, it's in, it's been so good to connect with you and to talk about these strengths because the 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 truth is uh all of us are not going to be good at everything but we can be good at something and all of us have something that we can we can contribute our voice matters our gifts are important and so thank you so much for working with people to help them to come to that awareness, to, to claim their voice and to understand how their strengths work. Um, any final thoughts or words of wisdom you'd like to, to share with us as we close? I would just like to remind people to own it. Step into your spotlight. Be comfortable with who you are and the genius that you bring. And if you're having a hard time figuring that out, Ask people you trust. Ask people who know you. Find out what kind of consistent qualities people see in you and and start there because we're all sitting in our own jar and can't read the label (laughs) on the outside, right? So get somebody who can read the label on your jar and give you a different perspective. What a great, what a great way of thinking about it. Yeah, we're all sitting inside of our own jars. We can't read the label on our jar. We have to read everybody else's just label. Get here on my own. I got here because I learned from the people <laughs> I work with. I learned from my own coaches, right? I didn't do this on my own. Yeah. This yeah. this just a village. And trust others to fill in your I don't know what I don't know box and be open to the possibility. And then go out there and stake your claim. Mm, love it. Make your imprint. I love it. Wonderful words of wisdom from Joe Self. She is Peru's only Gallup certified strengths coach. She's the lead facilitator and trainer for strong communities and strengths genius throughout Latin America, and she's on a mission to raise a strength-based generation. You can connect with her and find out more about this and the other programs that she offers at a very cool website, joeself.consulting. Yes, that's an actual website with a very cool domain name. It's joeself, J-O-S-E-L-F dot consulting. And uh, we'll have that link on the website as well. Joe, it's been a real pleasure to connect with you. Have a um, have a wonderful day down there in Peru doing what you're doing. And thank you so much for being on Rebelpreneur Radio. I really appreciate it. Will do. And thank you so much for the opportunity to chat, Ralph. Really appreciate it. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.